scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Most people do not take action and they sit down and blame God. You know you came from a family where no one has risen and God says, I'm going to connect you to strategic people. Let me tell you what to do with that prophecy. Just saying amen and sitting down. The good people will come, but you're not understanding the principles of human relations will make you to drive the good people from your life. If I were you, while that prophecy is coming, I will go online. How to maintain strategic relationships. As you are studying, that act of studying is called faith. You are preparing are we together now most believers do not know what to do with the word of god when you receive the word of god you don't just stay there you now begin to make room because the vessel will always make the anointing look small or large the anointing can look small based on the shape of the vessel carrying it when she came and met the prophet he said go and expand your capacity man of god you are trusting god for nations to place a demand upon the grace of your life. I know you had a dream. I know you saw a scripture. But if your capacity is small, the Bible says an heir for as long as he's a child. Is that in your Bible? That he differed not from a slave even though he be Lord of all. Your capacity is too small for God to trust you with the burden and the responsibility of mentoring nations. You will be a casualty to a generation. So the mercy of God is what will make him to limit you and keep you when you expand capacity joseph how do you want to stand before pharaoh when you have not mastered the art of interpreting dreams to the kings god would not put his reputation at stake because of your unpreparedness so joseph while you are interpreting the wine presser's dream and the baker's dream that is an act of faith preparing for the day of honor David, while you are killing the lion and killing the bear, realize that the ultimate goal is to bring down Goliath and become king. Stephen, keep serving tables as an act of faith because one day you will be promoted to a position of honor and nobility. Let me tell you what happens in church. For many of us, we know that the grace of God is available. We will quote everything God has said to do, but we do every other thing but ignore the responsibility component. Just the revelation alone that all blessings come from God through men to men, no matter how disadvantaged you are, if you know God and you learn how to keep relationships, you can earn a living just by those two mysteries. Just loving God and knowing what to do with men. You may have heard me say in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but believe me, who likes you matters. A king likes a woman, she becomes a queen immediately. He hates another woman, she leaves the palace immediately. God has brought many strategic relationships to your life that were supposed to fulfill the prophecy he gave you. But you're not paying the price to understand what to do with relationships. Have destroyed great opportunities. And then we blame God and say, Lord, when will my word come? Hallelujah. When I found this, I took responsibility over my life. Every time God speaks to me, there are two things I look for. Number one, 
to receive what he has said to conceive it as a reality into my spirit the next thing is i begin to pray show me the responsibility component of that prophecy what do i need to engage in partnership with god to make it work are we together yes. if i've prayed and i've asked god to bring kings i must know how to raise kings i must know how to build kings ladies and gentlemen i hope god is speaking to someone we're about to pray believers do not allow the word of god to be null and void in your life because of your not understanding the responsibility component faith is obedience faith is responsibility faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said the power is released at the point of doing as they went for the lepers he said go and show yourself to the priest the bible said as they went not before they went the four lepers who brought salvation to samaria as they got up and began to move the lord amplified their efforts and made their enemies to hear the sounds of chariot planted all kinds of imaginations in their minds apostle god has called me into the healing ministry what do i need to do just get up and organize a crusade be prepared for embarrassment I, I assure you, you will be alone on that crusade ground. It will be as if God did not send you. Because that is not how God lifts men. When God tells you he's giving you a healing ministry, the first thing is to take time and believe it into your spirit. Then number two, look for them who through faith and patience, there are always some them to follow. Because Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. In spite of the fact that he was called a savior, he could not be savior as a baby. God told him he was savior. He needed to allow age to justify that prophecy. And while he was waiting for age, he kept doing certain things. At age 13, he was in the temple. All that motivated him was the prophecy. You would see Jesus walking so hard, you would be in doubt. Are you really the word? How could the word be learning this much? How could the word be asking so much questions? He was preparing because a day would come, Satan would come and test him. And he needed to build capacity with the, it is written that will give him victory show me what you are doing James said show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by the works I'm doing are we together most people are not partnering with prophecy I submit to you ladies and gentlemen behind every champion who who you see the grace of God walking in their heart is an investment of diligence diligence when I heard the song that um, Solomon Lange was singing here. I've not even heard that song. I said, ah, these people, they keep bringing songs. Now, I know that you say the grace of God has worked, but go and find out when people sit in the night while you are sleeping, writing songs. You know how many sermons I prepare in a week? You have no idea. Believe me. I've not slept for up to two hours or three hours. In truth, I will tell you, from yesterday into today. The service in the evening, there are several other things to do that's how the grace you are talking about works there are many lazy people wanting multiplied grace out of nothing and wondering why destiny let me tell you people who acknowledge the working of God's grace have the power to force any door that closes there's no time discussing anything when one door closes they force another one to open by faith show me a man you think has the grace of God and behind the working of that grace I show you diligence as proof of faith diligence in prayer diligence in the study of the word diligence in building capacity i came into your church and i saw excellence i saw everything being done right that is the grace of god walking upon your man of god i am what i am by the grace of god paul said but this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all yet not i but the grace of god this was the testimony of the man who was an epitome of of grace businessman let me tell you you have not allowed the potential of the grace of God to speak in your life truly you know why because you have not backed it up with obedience diligence show me the business book you have read as proof that you believe you're a kingdom financier show me the millionaire you have honored and sat under to constructively learn mentorship as proof 
that you want the word of God to work in your life. Young man, I'm not excelling in ministry. Show me who you have submitted to learn to understand the principles of ministry. What do you know about organization? What do you know about leadership? What do you know about people skills? What do you know about homiletics? The sound exegesis of scripture. What do you know about managing the variety of people? What do you know about excellence? Don't say no member is coming to your church. God is not a fool. Are, are you learning now? I hope I'm not too harsh. Sorry, eh? we apologize after the grace, but I need to press this into your heart. I come and I see the shock that you are saying is global. It is dirty. It is unkept. You wake up by 10 o'clock. You close by 2 o'clock for a flimsy reason of a runny stomach. And there's someone in your house. I come to buy something in your shop. It is closed. And yet you are there saying, Apostle, thank you. Thank you so much. Apostle, why is it that God is not lifting me? I want to be like Walmart. I want to be like these guys. Go and see how people make use of the grace of God by engaging faith. You have a healing meeting tomorrow. You are watching football in the night. I know God will do it. I'm not the healer. You will be disappointed and surprised by the next day. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm showing you what unbelievers do. Even without the backing of grace. And what many believers do not do. The diligence component of faith is what we need to obtain grace to return back in. Go and sweep your one room as proof that you believe God will give you an estate. Go and dress it and make it look like the palace you are trusting God to get to. Are we together? You are a worshiper. Sit down and start writing songs. Don't say if God wants to give me, he will give me. There's something called inspiration. Put a worship song in your atmosphere. Sit with a biro and a paper expecting to write write it and ask a professional look at this song can i edit it they will remove a few unscriptural things there and begin to prime your creativity you're a man of god prepare sermons even if you don't have an invitation because you do not know when pharaoh will call you joseph the bible says to be instant in season and out of season is god speaking to someone go and train yourself build capacity someone will sit down and say let me give you five minutes tell us what you can do in five minutes and in five minutes you market yourself with diligence let me tell you when faith is at work it makes grace beautiful let me repeat it again when faith is at work it makes grace beautiful Bazanji kunya ba. This is how we were taught how to put the grace of God to work. So every time God speaks, He said, "My Father walketh; He that told, I walk. My Father walketh; He that told, I walk. My Father walketh; He that told, I walk." Look at Jesus as our perfect model. Show me any point of laziness and laxity in the life of Jesus. That was the epitome who was full of grace and truth. Jesus would get up in the morning and pray. And the moment he was done praying, he would be on his way going. There are many men of God, respectfully speaking, who have not begun ministry in fact, but the sheer level of laziness. You preach one message for three hours, you sleep for two weeks to rest. What have you done? And yet you are trusting, oh God, let me be everywhere. Don't you think it will kill you? Will you be able to stand it? Esther, I know God told me one day I'll be sitting near Ahasuerus. With this version of you, you are joking. Go and look for Haggai, the man who transforms Hadassah, the village girl, to Esther, who is worthy of Ahasuerus. It was not the village girl. If she had stood before the king, he would even punish Haggai for bringing such a woman. Between prophecy and manifestation was one year of rubbing a kind of oil. Hagar called and said, forget what the other women are doing. I suspect you'll be the queen, but not like this. 
the king is not stupid there's something about his eyes let me work on you and the king began to walk hey guy began to walk i know the king i have access to the chamber i know what the king wants let me reproduce what the king wants in you and in esther chapter 2 and verse 17 the bible says when esther showed up before ahasuerus esther 2 17 it says and the king loved esther above all the women meaning there were others before her arrival but not when esther the prepared esther full of faith that's how grace works immediately the bible says her preparation made her to obtain grace is that in your bible and favor in the sight more than all the virgins there were others just like there are others before you show up oh there were others in abuja you are not here for competition but the truth is that faith gives visibility to grace faith gives visibility there are people i came in and i saw so many people outside you're watching you are following me right now you left your homes some of you bent over backwards to be here in this conference did you know that your act of leaving your home sitting in the sun sitting in this place is an act of faith it is proof that you know god will not leave you the way you came how could you go back the way you came you have done your own part by coming I'm sure there is a man of God here who left everything to come and sit down to say, Apostle, I know there is, there is a kind of oil. There is an anointing that I'm looking for. Maybe a music minister who has come here saying, listen, doors don't seem to be opening. But if you just sat down there lazily and said, well, I know after all, God can come and meet me in my room. It doesn't work that way. You have come. So in the next five minutes as we pray, that that grace will rest upon you now that you have activated it through faith ask any great man they remember where god took them from everywhere that i go everything that i do all i see is grace everywhere that i go Everything that I do, hey, all I see is I like, I like the Hausa version of that song. Have a mama You see, this grace, eh? In one day, when the grace of God is truly allowed to find expression. The grace of God can take the prayer request of a man's lifetime. I really mean it without exaggeration. And bring it to the faith of one who walks by faith. Not one who is just waiting for it to walk. There are testimonies that will not, it will not be wisdom to share some things here because it would destroy the goal of what we are doing. There are testimonies that motivate. There are testimonies that can discourage again if not managed. But believe me when I tell you, there is no limit to what the grace of God can do. When that grace meets faith at work, most of us have abused the grace of God because the faith component, faith there meaning your obedience, understanding the role you have to play in actualizing this. Anything you find in scripture, don't just say I receive a loan. Go back and say what is the role I have to play. Joseph, if God has told you that you will be a prime minister, behave yourself wisely. Conduct yourself well and take care of the wine presser and the baker in the prison because they will be the ladders who will speak to the king for you. Daniel, make sure you purpose in your heart not to defile yourself with the king's meat according to 1 verse 8, Daniel. Make sure you behave yourself wisely because you are going to be a ruler even through the dispensation of about four to six kings. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if you believe in the God of heaven then make sure you do not stand and compromise bowing down to that stature even if it will cost you your life time will fail me 
the Bible says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. The, the, the chronicles of this man, Hebrews 11 is not just a faith chronicle, it's a grace chronicle. But the grace was manifested by those who walked by faith. It says, now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. It calls it the evidence or the tangibility of the things not seen. It said, for by it the elders. That means you are not qualified to be called an elder until you show us your good report. Every elder is not an elder just by age. You must show us the exploits of faith. I have translated the grace of God from this to this. Many years ago, true story, I was sitting near a soccer way and I saw a plane move. I'd never entered a plane in my life before that time many many years ago and I looked at it and I just smiled I said my God many people are in that plane for many reasons others the leverage of their parents sacrifice others corruption others wickedness others are terrorists going to destroy other people many reasons and then I remember the Lord spoke to me and said my word will put you in this Once upon a time in this very Abuja, I would be coming from Zaria and I would come and arrive at a particular park. And once I arrived, there was a small restaurant close to it there. I liked their food because it was very delicious and it was cheap. I would enter there, smuggle myself into that restaurant. I can't even remember what I used to eat. I would just eat and then I would get up in the strength, you know, like Elijah went in the strength of what he ate and do my business in Abuja. And then one time, I think it was last year, we were graduating a school of ministry students and I needed to do a photo shoot with them. So they were hurriedly bringing me there. And as I was passing the same place, the restaurant has been, I think they've, they've removed the place or so. And I looked at that place and I remember there was a bank facing it and I just nodded my head. All I see is grace. I see grace All I see is grace Look, there is nowhere you cannot go There is nothing you cannot handle When the grace of God is upon your life I will tell you again ladies and gentlemen We are what we are by the grace of God But that this grace was not showered upon us in vain In that we took advantage of the consciousness of the provisions that come by grace and we acted upon it in obedience by faith so here's how the Bible puts it by grace true faith by grace true faith one more time by grace true faith the assignment of grace is to give you access the assignment of faith is to give you possession you need access and possession to equal experience it is access plus possession that equals experience by grace we are saved by grace we are healed by grace you have an enviable destiny but faith now begins to show you the participatory role the obedient response to the word of god so that god would now make good his speakings concerning your life let's stop here at this conference please rise up on your feet as we pray i want to please plead with solomon lange to just come and sing that grace song once and then once he sings it i will just pray as he sings it i just want to take the time meditate let that song please as much as possible just allow him do the singing and let him just let him just i think you'll be able to play go ahead Listen carefully to that song. Let it just soak into your spirit. Yes, sir. Amazing grace is the sweetest sound that saved my life. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You took my shame.
of God is at work in your life but now you know the missing component as you walk full of grace Lord what do I need to do with what you have said you have called me the head and not the tail but leaving it there will not make it good in my life I obtain grace where is the responsibility component and it's interesting that I taught you that there is a dimension called the enabling grace there is an energizing from the spirit that empowers you to now do, to now walk, to now pray, to now study, to now give your very best. Wherever you are in the next one minute, I'd like you to cry for the grace to do, the grace to do. Go ahead, lift your voice and pray. Grace for total obedience, total obedience, that all you demand from me to do, to make good your word, I obtain grace. Someone is praying. Holy Brook, are you praying? Those outside, make sure you are praying. Following by way of the internet, make sure you are praying. By grace, true faith. By grace, true faith. You're lifting. By grace, true faith. You're rising. By grace, true faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith is your action of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person. Our time is fast spent. I will just speak over your life and then we're done. And in speaking, we'll just do it at once. I will just speak whether you are trusting God for healing, you are trusting God for an open door, prophetic declarations are powerful the bible says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved prophetic words are not just pronunciations prophetic words move beyond the realm of your hearing to the realm of the spirit they program and they create possibilities 
he says I have been commanded to bless hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so I'm going to stand in faith with the angel over this house and his dear wife and indeed the corporate anointing in this place just to speak over our lives I want you to please receive receive expecting to return with a testimony do you believe that yes, yes. father in the name of Jesus I thank you for the Olive Brook Church. Thank you for Pastor Jibril and his precious wife. Thank you because you have allowed us the opportunity to serve your grace, your wisdom, your power, even to your people. Thank you for the many people who have come gathered here today, scattered across this auditorium and outside, the many more who are following online. I declare, oh God, that every prophetic word that comes out from now, let it be backed up by your power and let it produce potent results in the name of Jesus. Now I decree and declare over your life as a church and as individuals in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, everything that represents shame and represents reproach in your life, it comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. I decree and declare that everything that looks like delay, delay, it looks like you've been stagnated in one position, not going forward. I prophesy to you according to Exodus 14, 12 to 14, in the name of Jesus, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, in the name of Jesus. Let me declare Psalm 112 over your life. The Bible says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. I pray for your children. In the name of Jesus, they will not be small. In the name of Jesus, they will not be mediocre. And then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever. In the name that is above all names, every door that has been closed towards your life, please hear me. I declare over you this week, this week, not next week, I prophesy that those doors are open now. And the axe head fell and they said alas master it was borrowed and he said where fell it let me pray for someone who is owing in debt or any kind of financial trouble by the power of the prophetic I decree and declare may God use men to bring you out of that tragic situation in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon God uses men to lift men I don't know which human vessel has been programmed by God to partner with the spirit for your rising but in the name of Jesus wherever they are I command them to show up in your life I command them to show up in your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ And David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called on a man called Ziba, sent him to Lodeba to go and fetch a crippled man called Mephibosheth. And they brought Mephibosheth and he would remain in the king's palace forever. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the David that will send for you and honor you even at a global scale, I command them to show up now. I command them to show up now in the name of Jesus the Bible says now Jericho was shot nothing could come in and nothing could go out there are limitations like that they stand before you nothing goes in nothing goes out they just represent an inconvenience but the Bible says at the shout the seventh shout on the seventh day that the wall of Jericho fell flat and it sank in. I speak to every wall that stands before you. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command it to sink and give you way. To sink and give you the right way of passage. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
there's a very interesting man in the Bible. I just spoke about him called Mephibosheth. If you study Mephibosheth, the problem he entered was not his making. It was the mistake of a midwife. Midwives are those who help to transit seasons in your life. As he was coming out of his mother's womb, a nurse was careless. And because of the carelessness of that nurse, the man became crippled forever. The midwives that help us through destiny can leave us as mighty men or can leave us as Mephibosheths. Are we together now? I want to speak because it matters. There are men who help you to cross that river to the next level. And if they are careless and insensitive, they may cripple dimensions of your life and incapacitate you. Even though Mephibosheth was favored, he never walked. I decree and declare, everyone sent by God as a midwife, as a destiny helper, may they play their role effectively. Hallelujah. Let me declare restoration. There are two things the Bible promises to restore. Number one is time. Number two, things. These are very important elements of destiny. When you lose time, you have lost everything. When you lose things, you need time to have them back. And God said he's powerful to restore both. Both the years that the canker worm has stolen and the things you have lost. I speak to someone. I don't know what you have lost. So some of you, maybe you got saved late. Maybe you got lazy towards spiritual things. But I declare supernatural restoration now. I speak prosperity to your life in the name of Jesus by divine favor may your hands be full enjoy the ministry of destiny helpers and I pray for Olive Brook Church I stand upon this exalted altar and I decree and declare step into a new season a new season of influence a new season of power a new season of wealth a new season of revelation in the name of Jesus begin to command results fearful results I speak to the two lift gates of this region I declare that you are open for the gospel you are open for advancement you are open for development by the power of the Holy Spirit and I command the controlling powers within this region in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command that you bow to the Lordship of Christ in Jesus mighty name I pray please allow me a minute or two my apologies for time let me perform a very important function the greatest assignment we are given as preachers and indeed believers is to help people know the Lord and to connect to the reality of his life please lend me your attention now John 17 and verse 3 Jesus was praying and this is what he said he said and this is eternal life that they may know you the one true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent in every gathering like this thousands of people I saw several people outside many more within this auditorium and several others who are watching now live and will be watching by way of rebroadcast this is a huge opportunity to draw many to the cross. Can I tell you, coming to Jesus is more than just being a Christian. It's more than the religiosity of feeling spiritual. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever, that blessing is for whosoever, whosoever believes in him, he says, should not perish. You may have been around church, you may have been, a, um, you know, around spiritual things for a long time. He's not calling you into religion. He's calling you into a practical, functional relationship. And I'm going to make two calls in one. Number one, you are saying, Apostle, as I heard you teach, the Spirit of God began to nudge me that I need a relationship with this Jesus. More than a miracle from this Jesus, I need a relationship with him. Number two, you are saying, Apostle, my life, my Christian experience has gone haywire. I need to rededicate my life genuinely. Now, you see, the beautiful thing about spiritual things is that God respects your will, even at the expense of your eternal condemnation. John chapter 3 from verse 17, he says, For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
I'm going to make this call. I believe there may be people in here. And for those, I'm going to ask you to come and stand here. And all the overflows, I'm going to request as the ushers guide them or the protocol to just move maybe to your screens in front and just stand there and we'll pray together. And for those who are following by way of television or internet, right in your home, your office, wherever you are watching from, Jesus is willing and ready to give you a new life. Are we in agreement on that? So I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. You are in this auditorium. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. Don't say they know me. No, no, no. That's, that's not what we're discussing here. This We're talking about a genuine relationship with Jesus. I make my call now. One to five. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. God bless you. Two. Thank you. Olive Brook, is this the best you can do? celebrate them as they come Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other keep coming Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Ladies and gentlemen, I salute you for your courage. It always pays to say yes to Jesus. We've said yes to things of lesser value. The noblest decision that any man can make under heaven is to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. I salute you in front and all who are scattered across the overflow. May I please request, I'm standing here in front with pastor, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and please say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i have heard your word i declare that i love you with all my heart i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that eternal life is imparted into my spirit. From today and forever, I am a child of God. I declare that the grace of God is at work in my life. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have come acknowledging your lordship over their lives. And I declare that the power to save is at work in them. In the name of Jesus, according to your declarations and the integrity of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that from today you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. I bless you and I declare that the grace of God is truly at work in you. The power of sin, Satan. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. 
Let the rain be.